What we are repairing today is how to replace the battery and the controller. Now the first step is to take the tool and remove the foot stand. After removing the foot stand, take the corresponding tool to remove the seven screws. After removing the bolton shell and removing the screws, we first hold the bolton box with both hands in front, lift it up and the angle is about the same, shake it left and right at the back and it will fall off. Turn the cover over and then take the tool to remove these 10 screws. After removing these 11 screws, we remove the black cover and the waterproof pad inside. Now we pick up the scissors. The first step is to cut off the charging port. After cutting off the heat shrink tube, we will directly unplug it. Now cut the heat shrink tube inside step by step and pull out all the wires ends first, including the controller. Now we cut off all the accessories that need to be replaced. These thermal plastic tubes, this is the battery discharge line. We also need to cut it off. A car has two charging lines. This one should also be cut off. During the cutting process, the scissors cannot cut this line. If the line is cut, it will cause fire and electric shock. Now we are cutting the connector of the instrument. This line is the power line of the instrument. We continue to cut. This is the ear protection line. This is the motor line, all of them must be cut off. When we cut the motor line, we can cut it like this. The scissors can face the top, don't use too much force. Just let the heat shrink tube separate. We can clean up the extra heat shrink tube later. This is the same, don't use too much force when cutting, just turn it slightly on it, it will fall off with one pull. These three are the motor line at the back, and they also need to be cut off.
Now, after we cut it, we will cut the line of the conversion module. The heat shrink tube on it can be cut off as needed. Now, we unplug all the wires that has been cut. Now we can take down the controller. If anyone is broken, we can replace it. But when we re replace it, we must see the letters 52 volt on back. We should replace the volt with volt. Remember not to replace it by mistake. Now we start to replace the battery region. We press the gap at the back with our thumbs and push it gently. We hold the wire in front with our hands, but we can lift it, but we cannot use force. We just push it gently. After it is tightened a little, when we reach our hands below to take it, we must remember that the charging port must be pushed over. If we don't push it, we can't take out the battery. If we can't take it out, don't force it. First, remove the waterproof screw on the side. When we take out the battery charging port, this is the tail line wire. The heat shrink tube must be cut off. After we disassemble it, the wire of the charging port also needs to be returned, otherwise we can't take out the battery. During the process of taking it out, the glue next to it must be cleaned up, otherwise the gap is too small, we clean it back. After we take out the wire of our charging port, we can start to disassemble the battery. Use your thumbs and hands to push forward. After push a little, our battery wire can be slightly less forceful and gently pulled up. After the back is pushed up, we hold the bottom with our fingers and now the battery can be taken out. Take out the battery. If there is a problem with battery, we, we can replace it directly. Before replacing, we need to clean the old heat shrink tubes on the model. After we clean the old heat shrink tubes, lift the original heat shrink tubes. Equipped with a bullet head, the suction in front of the bullet head should show the color of copper. The same operation is formed on the other motor wire. After cleaning, we can assemble the good battery. We have to install the same size battery as the disassembled one. 52 volts must be equipped with 52 volts. The capacity at the back is not unimportant, but it must be equipped with 52 volts. Our batteries are generally equipped with sponge stickers. One thick piece is here, one piece here, and two pieces here. One thick piece here, and one thick piece here, and one thin piece here. Four pieces plus the stimulated sponge sticker at the tail to prevent side impact. We still have one piece. Now we start to assemble the battery. First, take out the motor wire. Take out the foreign matter at the bottom of the big board and pull out the tail light wire. Put the battery down like this first. When putting it down, we also need to pre bury these two wires from the side in advance. This side was put in this way before. 
Here we put it in from this side. Hold the wire with your hand and put it down. After it come down, we push the battery back and push it into place. Now we take the controller. 52 volts must be equipped with a 52 volt controller. There are two controllers for dual drive. We connect the plugs back and replace the whichever one is broken. The first step is to connect the discharge port. The same is true for the two. Connect the front side of the discharge first. The battery charging should pass through this hole. After passing through, you can ignore it for the time being. Now, we start to plug in the controller. Before installing the air conditioner, we also need to clean up the old heat shrink tube on it. After cleaning, we take the corresponding heat shrink tube and put it in each one. Now after the heat shrink tube is completed, we find the electrical wire. We need to match the color during the plug-in process. Yellow is yellow, green is green, and blue is blue. Don't plug it wrong. After plugging it in, we plug in the model ear protection wire. There will be ear protection wires on each controller. Be sure to find the corresponding color and plug it in. After finding the two colors, the color holes are also aligned. Be sure to plug it in well and align the pins. Don't plug it crookedly. Plug it crookedly and it will cause the instruments to report the lost period. After plugging it in, there is another wire between our two controllers to connect. Find the three wires connected to our controller. And plug in the two corresponding colors of yellow, blue, and black. This is the same as connecting the controller and the three pins are plugged into three. In the three holes, don't insert it crookedly. After it is plugged in tightly, We found the power cord of the instrument and plug it in. We plug the power cord of the instrument. After we change this controller, we must remember it before we change it. We know how to change it. Before, if you don't know how to change it, the situation is like this. There is A-C on the back of this controller. There is B-C. We have to divide it to A and B. A is connected to the motor line and the ear muff line at the back. B is connected to the motor line in front, which needs to be connected. A is connected to the motor line at the back. Remember not to connect it in reverse. If you connect it in reverse, the direction of the motor will be different. Now that we have plugged in all the plugs, this module control module is connected to all the light strips on the car body. We also need to plug it in if the lights are on. 
the line of this light strip is on the controller A at the back and it is also plugged in hole to hole. After we have plugged it in, we will start to test whether the motor is rotating normally. After all the wires are plugged in, we will start in, to test the motor rotation. We will turn on the instrument. It seems that our two motors are rotating clockwise, which means that we have installed them correctly. It is okay. We can now blow all these heat string tubes and install the controller as we disassembled it. After all the heat string tubes are blown, see which ones are not blown well. Blow them again gently. Blow them with a small gear to the medium gear. Okay, after the small gear shrinks the rest, we will start to install the controller and pre-bury the wires for everyone. Now we plug the controller. The first one should be vertically against the direction of our barrier, and the second one is also put down in the same way. After putting down the controllers on both sides, we start to run the wires. The wires should be fully filled in every corner. If all are put in this piece, we can't put them down. This one, we press the load bearing module vertically. Now after our wires are squeezed evenly, press them slightly with your hand and it will be done. Later we will apply the waterproof glue on these two points in the next operation. The charging port will be applied with waterproof glue later. After that, we will start to put the waterproof strips, straighten them evenly, and put them on with the holes facing each hole. Now our cover is also covered in this way. After covering it, we take the screws that we just removed and take the current screws to screw a few screws diagonally. Don't tighten them first, just tighten them a little. The holes of the waterproof strips must be aligned to ensure better waterproof effect.
we ensure that each screw is added with a leader pad. For example, if this strip comes out, we can push it back a little by hand to ensure that the waterproof strip is squeezed in place. After tightening, we can tighten these 11 screws. During the tightening process, check the waterproof strips on both sides. After tightening, we have another screw to fix the brick line on the side and the line in the pedal and the line buckle of the line buckle. After fixing all these screws, we take our waterproof glue gun and apply glue to the discharge port and lie on the side and the line port here to prevent water from overflowing. After applying the glue, we hold the wire head and turn it twice, which will make the glue and the wire port contact better and the waterproof better. At the beginning, after we cover these screws, we can cover the plastic bottom shield. Pick up the bottom shield first when it can be put in here. We tap it gently with our hand and it will go in. After tapping it in, we mainly focus on these two wires and the wire of the charging port. We must arrange them well and put this wire in here as much as possible. In this gap, we must arrange the wire of the charging port from here. Don't let it be put in here. If you put it in, it will get stuck, causing our wire to break. Put down the wire of the charging port and this wire will also be closed to the edge. In the process of installation, if the brake wire here is too long, we can generally pull it at the back. After pulling it, when the wires at the back and the front are evenly in place, we start to cover it down. During the covering process, the wire must be protected to prevent it from being clamped here, and same is true for the wire. After covered it, tap it with your hand and it is done. If the classic of the screw on the upper part is inside, we don't need to add a gasket. If the gasket falls off and there is no gasket, we need to add a gasket. The hole must be aligned. If it is not aligned, we can swing the plastic base plate back and uh, force to see if the hole is in place. After it is aligned, we take the corresponding screw and tighten it. If the gasket falls off, we take the corresponding piece and the corresponding gasket to pad it inside. If there is no gasket, it must be padded. After we have tightened it before, after tightening the screws, check whether the side fits perfectly. If it is fits well, we screw the foot stand screws. After the foot stand screws are screwed, our car has replaced the controller and replaced the batteries. The repair has been completed.